Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the Moving to Haiti series. So ever since I started my channel, I have gotten so many questions related to moving to Haiti. I get a lot of DMs where people explain their specific situation and they ask me for advice. And I typically get the same questions over and over again. And so I said, you know what? I need to start a Moving to Haiti series where I discuss different topics related to moving to Haiti. In this video, we are gonna talk about finding a job in Haiti. Of course, I get a lot of questions about that because when you move to another country, you need to work, you need some sort of income. I also get a lot of questions about, you know, the possibility of working remotely. And so I'm going to cover all those questions in this video. So the very first thing you need to know is that Haiti has a very competitive job market. There is an extremely high, unemployment rates and so it can be difficult to find a job here and that's why you'll see a lot of people actually start their own business because you know they've searched and searched or they see that you know they can't really find a job in their field and so they're like you know what let me start a business um, in Haiti instead not everyone is interested in going the entrepreneurship route it could be very hard to do business in a different country I mean it's hard to do business anywhere it could take years before you break even you have to be very passionate about what you're doing so you know entrepreneurship just isn't for everyone although I love entrepreneurship this video is not going to be about that we are gonna focus on more the traditional job you know I actually have a full-time job so I have been able to find a job in Haiti successfully and so I want to give you all some tips and also share some of my experiences with you all my first tip would be to start your search as soon as you decide that you are interested in moving to Haiti okay so let me tell tell you why. I get a lot of messages where people are explaining their specific situation. So they might say something like, hey, I'm a civil engineer, you know, and I'm thinking about moving to Haiti in one year. I want to live in the South. Will it be easy for me to find a job? Are there jobs in my field? What is the process like? And so my answer is to literally act like you are searching for a job. As you are checking into these different job searching sites, you'll be able to see what types of jobs are being posted, where these jobs are located which is very important because when you are considering moving to Haiti you need to decide where exactly do you want to live and Haiti has 10 different departments even if there are a lot of jobs in your field in the west department you might be you know interested in moving to the south so you need to see are there a lot of jobs being posted in the south and are there a lot of jobs in my specific field when you look on these sites you will also see what are the qualifications that they are looking for do you meet those requirements Requirements? Do you have those skills? Do you see that 90% of the jobs require fluency in French, which is definitely a possibility because we have two official languages here, Haitian Creole and French. And we'll notice that a lot of these jobs are asking for fluency in French. So if you know that you're going to be moving in a year and you need to brush up on your French skills, then that will give you enough time to do so. And that's why it's important for you to start your research early on. Go on these websites and start gathering information. Of course, course it doesn't mean that when you are actually going to start applying that's the exact scenario that you're going to see but it's definitely going to give you an idea because if you go six months and you never see a job in your field you never see a job that you qualify for you never see a job in the location that you're interested in then that definitely should tell you something or you might be on these websites for six months and you see a whole bunch of jobs in your field and they're in the location that you're interested in and you meet the requirements you know that will tell you that hey it might be a little easy for me when I start you know actually applying you know or it might tell you this is something that's possible for me to do doesn't mean that's going to be a hundred percent easy because as you know it's a competitive market but you know hey there are these jobs that exist in my field this might be a good move for me whereas if you don't really see much in your field then that might lead you to do more research you know that doesn't mean to stop there just because you're on the job searching sites and you don't see anything related to your field that doesn't mean just to give up there that's going to tell you hey i need to do further research let me talk to people in my field let me talk to people in the area that i want to move to let me see where 
where are those jobs being posted? Because obviously there are people doing them, you know, so how do those people get those jobs? It's going to help you see what next steps you need to take. I definitely wish I started my search as soon as I knew I was gonna be moving to Haiti because that would have made things so much easier for me. I decided that I was going to move during my fall semester of grad school, which was in 2015, and I wasn't gonna be moving until June of 2017. So I had a whole bunch of time ahead of me to start my search. I assumed that it was going to be very easy for me to find a job here because there are so many organizations working in Haiti. There are so many initiatives geared towards the advancement of Haiti. There are short-term projects, long-term projects, full-blown programs. You know, I really thought it was going to be very easy because there would typically be a lot of opportunities for someone like me, especially because I did not focus on a specific sector. My concentration was on program management. And the reason why I selected program management is because I'm interested in so many different issues in Haiti. There's so many things that need to be done. If there's a project that's agriculture based, that's going to increase local production and uh, increase exports or something like that, I I'm interested. If there's an initiative that relates to microfinancing, I'm interested, <laughs> you know? If it's health, if it's education, it's like, I'm interested. It depends on the organization. It depends on the project. And then also I, you know, was a little flexible with where I was going to live in the beginning. I know I definitely wanted to end up in the West, but in the beginning I was like, you know, I'm just getting started, whatever, you know, is interesting. As long as the initiative is something that is truly contributing to the advancement of Haiti, then, you know, I'm on it. I really thought it was going to be easy. I was just like, okay, I'll start applying uh, maybe, you know, three, four months before, or I'll start looking three, four months before and see what I find. The first thing thing I noticed is that there weren't as many jobs as I expected. I'm looking on these websites every single day. And so I can see when a new job is being posted because I'm looking at it so frequently. And so there would be weeks that will go by with no jobs being added. I'm like, oh my gosh. And the jobs that were already posted were senior level positions, you know, for people with seven, 10 years of experience and all these things. And I was just like, man, I am just getting started. You know, this was five and a half years ago. And so I was just getting started I'm just like oh my gosh like what am I gonna do if I started looking maybe a year before I moved and you know I just kind of hopped in on these different websites and see you know what's happening how often are these jobs being added and you know what types of jobs are being added what are the requirements are they all senior level positions or are there some entry level ones as well I actually ended up finding an internship before I moved so um, I had something you know when I first moved to Haiti but what I really needed was a job not an internship I needed an actual job and so um yeah it was it was much harder than I imagined and if I started earlier then I would have been prepared and I would have had an idea so the next tip is to use both international and local job searching sites so the most popular job searching site in Haiti is job pal uh, you will find all types of jobs posted on there um, I actually was on there recently and I saw uh, jobs in finance and marketing and health and civil engineering and law. I mean, all types of jobs. And the jobs were in different parts of the country. Definitely check out the local job searching sites. But depending on your field, you can probably use job searching sites that are based in the country that you're in. So I was moving from the US and there are a few uh, US based job searching sites for international development. So when I was searching, I just narrowed the search down to Haiti and I was able to see all the jobs posted in Haiti related to international development. Definitely be sure to check out different organizations and companies that you know work in Haiti or you know are based in Haiti that you're interested in and go directly on their sites. So some of them have a career section where you can see all the job openings. There are also jobs that are specifically for foreigners. Just to give you all some examples, uh, there is Union School, which is an American school in Pétionville. I actually had an American friend who worked there. He actually moved to Haiti before I did. So if you're in the U.S. school system and you'd be interested in working in Haiti, then you could definitely consider Union School because they are looking for American teachers. Another example of a job that is specifically for foreigners is definitely, you know, working at the different embassies. There are embassies all throughout the Port-au-Prince area. The U.S. embassy is located in Taba. My next tip is to familiarize yourself with the cultural norms here. In my experience living in the U.S. Um, in Maryland because 
I know somebody's gonna be like, well, in um, Texas, this is how it is. In New York, it's like this. Okay, in Maryland, uh, since I was a junior in high school, they would always tell us, make sure to have your resume down to one page. That was something that they kept telling us, you know, condense it. You know, they don't want to be flipping through and having to read all this stuff. You need to have one page, one page, one page. <laughs> that was something that we heard all the time. That was completely different from here because I kept seeing CV and I'm like, man, I never had to write a CV because this whole thing was like, these employers don't have time to be going through all this stuff. It was always resume, resume, resume. Like when I see people CVs here, I'm flipping through pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. And I'm just like, wow, you know, it's completely different from what I'm used to seeing in the States because here it's like the more the better. If you start your search early on, then you will start taking note of these different things that um, are required. Like say you see that you definitely will have to be fluent in French and you know that you're gonna be moving, you know, a year from when you started looking, then you have enough time to brush up on your French skills. If you see that most of these jobs are asking for a CV and you always have a resume, you know, you need to start writing your CV and you need to make sure that it's good. Definitely use as many resources as possible to help strengthen your skills and also to help you have everything that you need when it comes time to apply. One of the resources that I wanna talk to you about today is Skillshare. Big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of the video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of online courses. If you are interested in learning a new skill and strengthening your skills, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start. There are all types of classes on Skillshare. You can browse through the different categories or you can search for exactly what you're interested in. Say you wanna become a better French speaker, then you can search through the French courses for a class that fits your needs. If you've only written resumes and you need help writing a CV, then you can also search for a class that will help you with that. There are all types of classes on Skillshare. If you watch my vlogs, then you know that I love to cook. My usual share my Sunday dinners with you and I'm always looking for new appetizers and desserts to add to my Sunday dinner menu. I am currently taking a class called Quick and Easy Desserts, A Beginner's Guide to Baking. It's by Grant Beatty. Skillshare has offered my supporters a free trial. The first 1,000 people to sign up will get a one month free trial. So the link is down in the description box. During your job search, you will probably hear people tell you that it's impossible to find a job without knowing someone and that you know people just give jobs to their friends and families there's no point in applying that is definitely a reality here don't get discouraged by that when I first moved here I had an internship that I found on one of the U.S. based job searching sites then my first job here I also found on one of the U.S. based job searching sites I did not know anyone in the organization I just sent in my application I got an interview and then I got the job and then my second job which is the job that I'm currently in I've had it since 2019 I actually saw the job opening on job pow and I did not know anyone in the organization I just saw the opening I applied and um, I got the job I am definitely not saying that it is easy but it is definitely something that can be done I'm sure it's easier for people who network a lot I'm personally not really a networking type of person in, but I definitely think it is something that you should do if you like to network. When you are going to different events with people that are in your field of work, you might run into someone in a you know organization or a company that you're interested in and they might not post their job openings online because you spoke to them and you told them about your experience and you show that you are fit for the position. You know They might recommend you or something. I wish I could give you more information about networking in Haiti and if it really helps you find a job, but I personally personally don't have a lot of experience in it. So if you are a networking type of person, you're always at different events and you love to network, please leave your comments down below and share your experience with everybody else. So now I wanna talk about working remotely because there are a lot of people 
who messaged me about working remotely in Haiti. And of course, if you watch my vlogs and you know I work from my home office, and I know a lot of people think I have the typical remote job that became very popular over the past couple of years. I actually don't. My job is based in Haiti, uh, but because of the structure of our team, we get to work from our home offices. We do not have to meet somewhere to work. Let me tell you what you need to work remotely in Haiti because it is possible, but there are some basic basic things that you need that aren't necessarily considered basic in Haiti. So the first thing is 24 hour electricity. For the most part, electricity here is very inconsistent. Depending on where you live, your landlord might provide a 24 hour electricity. I think that is more popular in the Port-au-Prince area. If you're gonna be here for a long period of time, then you definitely wanna get your own system. You know, you buy an inverter, you buy batteries, you buy solar panels, and whatever you need for the amount of energy that you are going to consume. But that is for somebody who is going to be here long term. If you are coming here for, you know, a shorter amount of time, because there are people that message me who are just going to be in Haiti for six months and then they're going to go to uh, Mexico or another country to work remotely. If you're going to be in Haiti short term, you're not going to want to buy all this equipment. You definitely have to find a place that has 24 hour electricity. If you are going to be depending on Ideash, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have a hard time working remotely because that electricity is not consistent enough to do anything serious. The next thing you need when you are working remotely is a strong internet connection. You will hear that a lot of people who work from home have two different internet options. So someone who actually lives here permanently might have a fiber optic. There aren't a lot of companies here with coverage throughout the country, but you will hear of Notcom, Digicel, and Access IT. Those are the companies that I hear of the most. There are other companies, but they don't necessarily have coverage throughout the country. We have our fiber optic with Notcom, and we pick them because they have decent service in our area besides the outages. I remember when we first moved here, people kept cutting down trees and they weren't mindful of the cables and we had all these outages. And sometimes it would take days for a technician to come. That is definitely an issue when you are working from home home and you always need Wi-Fi. And so that is why people have a second internet option. A lot of people have portable Wi-Fi, which I think is ideal for someone who is staying short term. Say you are staying at a hotel that has internet, but you know, you can't really depend on, you know, the hotel's internet. So you have your portable Wi-Fi as well. Or say you are staying in an apartment and the landlord provides internet. It's always good to have your own internet. So the portable Wi-Fi is a good option because, you know, say the internet is down and you have to go through the landlord to get them to get it fixed and that might take days and you're supposed to be working you don't have time to wait for days so you know with the portable wi-fi you know you have another option depending on where you live you could also use your phone as an emergency backup option and that's mainly for the cities the internet connection in rural areas is terrible whenever i'm in a rural area whether it's for work or whether i'm just going there for fun my internet on my phone barely works some places they'll say oh digicel only works, not Notcom, or they say Notcom works, not Digicel. It is really hard for people who live in rural areas to find internet connection. So you can't always depend on your data. If you're in the city, like Puerto Puente, of course, you can depend on your data. So say your internet goes out, then you know you can use your data. Definitely have multiple internet options. That way, when one goes out, you can use the other. A lot of people here are waiting for Starlink to be approved in Haiti, which is a satellite internet internet. If you follow a lot of Haitians on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, then you would have seen there's been a lot of talk about Starlink. We are fed up with the internet companies here. We need something that is more reliable, especially in rural areas. There are a lot of missed opportunities because of poor internet connection. Right now, Starlink is in the trial period. I think it's supposed to last for two years or something. There are um, different businesses and government agencies that are trying it out, but right now it's not available to everyone. So once it is available here, then it will definitely be easier to work remotely. I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions. It is very hard to speak on every single thing in these videos because they'll be super long. So, you know, if I forgot something, 
please leave it down below. Please leave your tips. Please leave your experiences. Be sure not to leave any links in your comment because links get blocked. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. So that is all for this video. I am so excited about this series. I plan to provide some valuable information that will help you with your move to Haiti. I am looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.